in our online worship service today. Uh, remember at Trinity, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life journey, no matter who you love or how you identify, we welcome you into the full life and ministry of this loving congregation. Welcome to Trinity. Uh, remember to click that love button and share this video with your friends. Remember to like and follow our Facebook page and sign up for our weekly email updates, so if you haven't already done that, so you get the weekly updates. Ash Wednesday is coming up, not this coming Wednesday, but the following one. And how do we get ashes to you so that you can impose yourself with ashes on Ash Wednesday? Well, we plan to have ashes for you. And what Danielle and our office and I are going planning to do is to organize our addresses into regional groups and ask someone in each region to pick up the packets of ashes for everyone in their area and then distribute those somehow before, uh, say, Tuesday of next, of, uh, yeah, not this coming week, but next week. So Ash Wednesday is the 17th, and we need to get ashes in everybody's hands really by the 16th. So uh, we'll plan to do that. Uh, let us know if you would like to help with that distribution of ashes uh, coming up. Uh, hopefully we'll have those in and ready to be distributed this coming Thursday. This is the first Sunday of the month, and we have Holy Communion today coming up in the service, so get your, get your uh, Super Bowl snacks ready for Holy Communion today. Uh, if you do have a birthday or anniversary or a celebration coming this week, let us know in the comments on our Facebook uh, stream, and we will would like to recognize that in our worship today. This is the day God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And in the name of all that is holy, let us worship. Facebook Community Corner page. 
And I look forward to having Kendall as part of our uh, worship experience and part of our congregation as we are now in this uh, online format. Um, also, I understand that some of you are getting your rounds of vaccination, so yay for that. I'm glad that that's happening and kudos to you. Some concerns still. Uh, Deborah's daughter and grandson, Andrea and Caden, uh, have been diagnosed with COVID. So we want to remember them in our prayers. Um, also, teachers in Cabarrus County, and I assume in other counties as well, uh, I think are beginning this week. The plan is to go to plan A with K through third grade. Is that right, Bob? Uh, yes. And uh, that's they're planning to do that on Tuesday. We need some, oh, one week from Tuesday. A week from Tuesday. We're, and we need some prayers about this. Um, tomorrow evening, I'll let you know that there is, it's tomorrow evening, there's right. a, demo, a demonstration uh, protesting in favor of vaccinations for teachers before returning to those classrooms. Um, Kim could probably give you more information True. about that. Yes, sir. And also tomorrow evening, I ask your prayers for uh, the city council meeting in Harrisburg uh, that I'll be attending. I was asked to attend by a friend who has brought before the Harrisburg city council an ord a non-discrimination ordinance to protect the rights of LGBTQ people. And so I would appreciate your prayers that um, our uh, State House representative in this area has uh, said this is an inappropriate ordinance. I don't think it is. And so uh, it's gotten a lot of news this past week. So please be in prayer for that. Uh, I'll give the invocation at that meeting. I've been asked to do that um, and also be there to answer questions. So please uh, offer your prayers up for both those things happening tomorrow evening. Um, the work of following Jesus just never ends. We don't get to rest from doing the work of justice and goodness in the world. Um, so I know you probably have other concerns, and I hope we can give attention to those in prayer as well. Let us pray. Indeed, O oh God, we come before you, our Creator, you who have given us life and breath and being, recognizing your care for all of creation and for all of us as your children. And we give thanks for the comfort that brings to our lives, your presence among us. We give thanks, O oh God, and pray for your comfort in those places where that comfort is needed most. We come also, O oh God, celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, baptism and New members, we come celebrating, God, the good things in our life, even in the midst of this pandemic, the relationships that we have, from which we draw strength and also offer, and to which we also offer our support and hopefully brighten each other's day with that. We have such infinite capacity, God, for doing good with each other. We pray for the courage to do that, to be the good people we are, all of us are, and to live that in ways that is helpful in bringing wholeness and healing in the same way Jesus brought wholeness and healing to his world. We recognize concerns People still diagnosed with COVID, living with COVID, many people dying still with COVID. And we pray for those families in their grief and ask your comfort and care in their lives. We pray for others like Deborah, who anxiously awaits the healing of her family members, other many thousands thousands of others like her waiting anxiously for people to be okay in their family. 
We pray for that. We also recognize, God, that our world still is in great need of goodness and justice. We are still in great need of doing right by those who serve us the most and often get thanked and the least and treated the worst. People like teachers and school staff, God, we pray for their safety in this county and in many other counties in this nation. As classrooms begin to fill up again, God, we pray for all the measures that can be put in place to be there for the safety of all those, learners and educators alike, students and parents as well. Dear God, we also recognize the profound grief that is happening and will continue happening in this school year and into school years to come. We pray, O oh God, that we will work to do right by our students, our children, as well as our educators. God, we pray also you would be with others in this county considering measures this coming Monday night for protecting people who are marginalized in our communities. And we ask for your care for them and for all who will be supportive as well as unsupportive of those rights. We ask God that you'll help us find ways to protect all our citizens equally. Go with us now, God, into the remainder of our worship today, into the message and song and word. Open our hearts and minds to receive what you may have for us, and I ask God for your care in the midst of leadership here. Be with all our leadership in this church as we look ahead for three to five years and also in the short term about how we reassemble. Help us, God, with organizing who we are and how we go forth, continuing to be the light in this community for those who are most marginalized. Grant to us now, O oh God, your gracious presence in hearing our prayers. Lend us, O oh God, your help in our times of great need this week. Inspire in us your will to bring about your realm in our little place in this world. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Yeah.
you all for that. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, hymn and song that is. Jesus, the light of the world. We seek to be light in our world. Can you recall a time when maybe you felt down? That's not a hard thing to imagine. <laughs> In the midst of this pandemic, there have been many times when I have felt down. And by down, I mean just feeling either so-so or maybe even couldn't drag yourself out of bed down. Maybe even physically sick with the flu, or maybe even with COVID. Or perhaps grief had or has its mysterious shadow hung over you. As I visit and text and message with people in our church during the week, I hear their stories, your stories. And it's uh, stories about being in those times and what lifted you up, who came at the right time to do that and say something to you or give you a thought. I have to say it's one of the greatest gifts of being a pastor is to hear those stories from the congregation about what, who and how that happens in their lives. What lifts you up? In our gospel story today, we get into such a time for the people of Galilee. This time comes immediately after our story from last week, where Jesus has healed the man in the synagogue of his unclean spirit. This story comes right after the trip to the synagogue. Hear the story. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law had fallen ill and was in bed with a fever. And they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered about the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who he was. In the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. There he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. And he answered, let us go into the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. So essentially, Jesus was going around the Galilee, lifting people up. Whenever I think about lifting up someone, or what lifts me up, a couple of images come to my mind. One of those is musicians. How they lift up their flute or horn or violin as they get ready to play music. And their music lifts us. Sometimes the music is an old hymn sung the way you remember it, maybe even such as what you heard uh, those assembled here this morning singing just a few minutes ago. Or maybe a more familiar hymn sung the way you remember it, like Amazing Grace or a mighty fortress is our God. Or maybe even devil with the blue dress on. <laughs> 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 
One of those hymns for me is a song that I remember in a previous church that I served, an anthem that we did called Creator Lift Me Up. And it goes something like, Creator lift me up, hallelujah. This is why you don't try to sing without rehearsing in church first. <laughs> or, and God will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. I'm, see, there you go. takes rehearsing, folks. <laughs> you can't just stand up here and do it off the cuff. <laughs> not all music is uplifting. <laughs> but not all uplifting music is hymns either. Or churchy, for that matter. Some rap music is really uplifting and inspiring to me. Some rap, in fact, is more saving than many of our hymns because it often has a message directly of what is broken in our world and to what degree. It has a message oftentimes of what is broken down or suffocating so many people in our communities who need very badly lifting up and the resources with which to do that themselves. Rap often names the need and the pain. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And a lot of hymns do that as well. I think of others that lift me up. Poets, for instance, lift me up when I read inspiring words they've written. I keep going back to the poetry of Amanda Gorman and also Jackie Shelton Green. Sometimes lifting someone up is just a matter of naming the common pain we all feel. In our brokenness of our grief or depression or our government or in our relationships. Jesus raises up Simon's mother-in-law. And the word here for lifted her up, believe it or not, is the same word used in Matthew 28, 6, when the angel says to the women at the tomb, Fear ye not, I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is lifted up. He is risen. The word is like gyro in the Greek. Rouse. Literally from sleep, from sitting or lying, from disease, or even from death, or figuratively from obscurity, inactivity, ruins, and even lifted up from non-existence into existence. Jesus lifts her up. What does that mean? We all need lifting up. But what does that mean? Howard Thurman said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. We might even say, have been lifted up. The way Jesus lifts up Simon's mother-in-law. I wonder, I don't know because of the, the word and also the context, how, how sick was she? She could literally have been dead. And Jesus lifts her up with this word used by Mark in, or by Mark in the Greek. And that would be a miracle indeed, wouldn't it? Another miracle. But the story here, I think, is more important than something that happens maybe defying explanation. Jesus again does some very simple things. He listens 
to the need and responds to that need. Was she past death? Who knows? The point is Jesus goes to the place where someone is suffering and low and needs lifting up and Jesus lifts them up out of their suffering. And he does this not just with Simon's mother-in-law but countless times in the surrounding regions. Giving her new life and giving them new life as well. We might say lifting up is what gives people new life. When we are lifted up, we feel like we have new life. Particularly in relation to Simon's mother-in-law here, I want to say a couple of things. One, unfortunately, the church is often the last to listen to the need of suffering people. I don't mean our kind, I mean the church, the whole church. I'll give an example. Women in ministry. In pastoral roles. In ordained ministry as priests. It occurred to me just recently, and I haven't thought about this in a long time, that a church group as large as the Southern Baptist Convention or the Roman Catholic Church still does not support the ordination of women to pastoral ministry and the priesthood. In 2021, It was only 22 years ago that I had trouble getting Sue Paulson ordained as a deacon in the church I was serving. Sue was the most gentle and caring person I think I've ever known in my life. She was a deacon in her own right. She did not need the church to make her that way. She served people. But because of one verse in the Bible, not even a word from Jesus, but from Paul, that a deacon shall be the husband of one wife, it was and is still thought by many today that means only men. And that, friends, is just bizarre to me. We have a female vice president in our country, a person of color. But women in many churches can't even be deacons still. We need to pay more attention to the suffering happening in our churches that our churches are causing. Because here's the interesting thing. Not only does Jesus raise up Simon's mother-in-law from near death, and we might even sort of wince when we hear the words, and immediately she began to serve them, because that is such a traditional way to think about that. Women is subservient. But the word there used for serving them is diakoneo. Guess what we make of that word in our churches? You got it. Deacon. It's the very same word we use for deacon. She begins to be a deacon. Wow. In our world today, public school teachers are still not considered essential enough to be vaccinated before returning to the classrooms. Is it just coincidental that 76% of public school teachers are women? 76%. Okay, so what's the point? The point is, if what you believe about the Bible or believe about church or believe about God doesn't lift people up, if it doesn't lift up those who are down and need lifting up, then you need to change how you understand at least one of those three things. Either the Bible, the church, or God. We need to be lifted up when we're down and when we have the capacity 
to lift others up. We need to be lifting people up and not pushing them down with our policies and procedures and systems. If we're going to follow the ways and teachings of Jesus, and if we're going to do what Jesus did, what would Jesus do in this situation or that situation? is pretty obvious to me when I look at what Jesus did in a lot of situations where Jesus lifted up whoever needed lifting up. Whoever was being marginalized or antagonized or oppressed or suppressed, Jesus was there lifting them up. And it is our responsibility as Christians to do the same, to lift them up. I'll close with just a word about our sacrament of Holy Communion coming up. Our sacrament of Holy Communion should remind us that this is our calling, to recognize Jesus' brokenness as our own brokenness, as all the brokenness of humanity, of all who are down and need lifting up, and that the cup of blessing which we bless is the new life Christ gives. We lift up the cup in communion. We lift up new life. May this sacrament become a reminder for us over and again that yes, we are all broken and we share in Christ's brokenness. And yes, we all drink the cup of blessing and we have a responsibility to make sure we are being new life for those who need lifting up. So let us declare with our communion and with our lives to lift them up. Amen. Our offering, you may lift up your offering as well. You may give it online, paypal.me forward slash comma church and support the ministries of this congregation, which I hope will become ways of lifting up those who are in greatest need through the pastoral ministries and the community ministries of this congregation. Our offerings will now be received.
Dear God, we ask your blessings on these offerings. We give thanks for all who have given. We pray your blessings on their lives. And we pray, oh God, these offerings will become ministries that lift up those in greatest need in our communities, in our congregation, and in our world. Amen. And I ask that you join me in our liturgy for Holy Communion. We remember and give thanks that on the night before Jesus lay down his life for his friends, he gathered at table with them one more time. He took the bread, he blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body. And after supper, as Jesus looked forward to God's long-awaited day of joy and power, he took the cups of wine, again gave thanks and praise, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. I will share this with you again in the reign of God. Share this bread and this cup in memory of me. Let us therefore proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ comes again. Come now, Holy Spirit of God, as you were present at creation, be present now. And let these gifts of bread and cup here and wherever we may be partaking of them become for us the bread of life and the cup of blessing. May we remember our brokenness and the lifting up you do with us as you were sent by Jesus to accompany us on our journey of faith. Be present now and transform this gathering in receiving this bread and cup into God's beloved community, friends in Christ. And hear us as we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is through the broken bread that we participate in the body of Christ, in Christ's brokenness, in the brokenness of our world and of our own lives. It is through the cup of blessing that we participate in the new life Christ gives. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. May this bill nourish us and refresh us. May it strengthen us and renew us. May it unite us and keep us in God's gracious love now and forever. Amen. Take it easy.
join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. God of love, we give you thanks for satisfying our hungry hearts with this meal. Send us from here to reveal your love in the world. Inspire us with the resolve and the courage, the dedication and devotion to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with one another. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom Light, for that precious Jesus. Take my hand. Y'all have a great week. <laughs>